One thing I want to uh, start off with uh, that isn't in here at all is um, I came to the uh, meetup last month at the Amazon building. Remember, it was like packed full of people. Um, and then we went out afterwards um, and had a drink together and met with people. And um, it was really, it was really, really special for me. Um, this past year has been really difficult mental health wise. Um, our family's had a really tough time. Uh, for me personally, it was really dark and hard and um, it was a place for me to try and hide. It wasn't, it wasn't nice to be with people. Um, so I, I was really appreciative of the, of the JavaScript community last, last month as we went out that I was able to just relax and be myself and show up and be me, if that makes sense. So um, thanks for doing that. And if, yeah, I, it, it was really surprising to me. Um, that it actually, that I got to a place like that, that it got so dark for me, or sh sorry, I should say dark for me. Um, but I think there's a lot of us around, there's a lot of people around us that are in those sort of situations and uh, to show up and to show up and be with people, um, be with our friends is really important. Anyway. Um, so, so thank you. Uh, tonight we're gonna talk about Ember and Ember Octane. And some people would say, what the hell is that? Um, people have said, isn't it dead already? Is it still maintained? Does anybody have tomatoes? Someone said I should bring a shower curtain, so if there any tomatoes were thrown. Um, but before that, a little bit about me. My name's Dave. Um, I'm a, uh, my handle's Kiwi up over. Uh, I'm a Kiwi, a New Zealander. Um, so, you know, instead of down under, it's up over. Does that make sense? <laughs> Mate. Um, a quick story. I work for a, an organization called Outdoorsy, where we, we're a marketplace for um, RVs and camper vans, um, where we're, a lot of camper vans and RVs sit in people's driveways for 50 weeks a year. So we're trying to help those people rent it to other people. Um, and this week, as we were looking for designers, um, someone sent in this dribble to us and said, hey, uh, this is some of my work, which was really weird because at the bottom was me. I'm like, is, is this community so small or is my face so weird or th this was super surprising to me. And, and uh, my uh, coworker who was doing that interview. Um, we just, did, it's really great to be here with Mercedes Benz as well. Yesterday we announced uh, an integration or uh, um, a partnership with Mercedes Benz for people who want to buy an RV. We, we um, are helping them out, uh, helping them get it set up. And then if you put it on a platform, it makes it a whole lot cheaper for you who are owning an RV. Um, for me, this has been a great job in that this is the first time in my career I've really been able to um, work with people that are creating businesses and then employing people. I've never, I've never worked so closely in tech with a job that's really helping people start little businesses, going from one RV to four RVs to then employing three or four people or 13 people as I did uh, late last year. There's a place up in Everett. They have 63 RVs, 40 f over Labor Day weekend. All but three of them were out. 44 of them were at the gorge listening to Dave Matthews. Um, and obviously I'm doing this pitch because we're hiring as well. So if you're looking for a place, but we're here to talk about Ember, right? So um, just going, well, I'm just gonna do a quick recap of what Ember is and where it came from. It's a front end, open source front end framework um, for building webby things or front endy things, yeah? Um, single page applications, SBAs is what it's really um, honed in for. There are other applications, but uh, we also, developer productivity is super important, um, and it's for ambitious applications like a, a Gmail or a, um, a Slack or uh, something where there's a lot of interactivity. Someone may be in their application all day long. One of the applications we have at Outdoorsy is for people that are running their RV rental businesses, that they're using it all day long, um, and Emma makes great, um, fits that purpose really well. Just a quick history. These are some of the frameworks and when, when they came out. Um, so Backbone and Angular, 
um, and then Ember, and then React, and then Vue, and then, and then, and then, <laughs> then. Um, so our application, um, and a lot of people in the Ember community, their applications uh, uh, we started at one point uh, 13 or 12 or before one point uh, before 2.0, um, even before that. And now we're up to the latest versions. Um, it hasn't been super difficult for us. It's one of the uh, core tenets of Ember is that we, we don't want to leave people behind. We want these applications to go on for a long, long time. Um, so why is it still relevant today? Um, the development process um, for, for Ember is very similar to Chrome. Every six weeks, we get a new Chrome. Right? Have you noticed what, ver what things have landed in your browser as you've been using Chrome? Have you noticed anything different? Do they ever talk about what is new? Who knows what the new features are? Anybody? The one new feature that drove me nuts is the dark mode. Dark mode is for the incognito window, uh, but now it's all screwed up. So. <laughs> So what Ember Octane is, is what we, we're calling an addition, Ember addition, um, to sort of, we've done, a, we, our, our Ember is in the very same uh, cycle. We do releases every six weeks. We put out a beta version uh, right as we do a release. And we're adding new features as we go. Um, so we, we've sort of, like, we have this publicity problem. As you <laughs> do we have a publicity problem? Um, so we're, we're putting a mark in the sand to say Ember Octane is a new addition, and it's a culmination of a whole bunch of great uh, new work that's happening. Um, some of it's already usable. We use it every day in our applications. But this marking of um, Ember Octane is uh, to say um, this is a new version, a new uh, paradigm, a new thinking in how we do the programming model for Ember application. So I'm going to be talking about um, talking about that. Here's a tweet I saw today. I just chucked in there. Amp, it may not be sexy. It may not be the newest thing, but it's going to be around. It's just going to keep going. It's what you're going to go back to when you need something. Um, so here, some of the things that Amber Octane is going to bring to us, and some of these things you're like, what? You don't have them already. Um, so I'm going to talk about two of them at this point, and I'm going to talk about why I think they're worthwhile. Oh, there's also a few things getting rid of in, in, um, in Ember as well. We've had a reliance on jQuery. Uh, we got rid of that. Um, I think we're on Ember. With our applications, we need to do some work to actually get rid of it. But um, it's been super helpful. As you saw, we started in 2011, um, where, where our target browser was i6. So we're moving forward. We're trying to keep up, um, trying to push JavaScript as well. Um, and I'll explain a little bit, hopefully a little bit of that as we go. So I'm going to talk about these two things here. Um, Glimmer components. Uh, Glimmer is our, um, is our view layer that's in Ember. We, took, we had a view layer before. We took it out. We did a whole bunch of work on it. How does this work? How can we make this better? And now we're reporting it and bringing it back into the Ember framework as a whole. And I'll talk about some of the things with that. And then we'll talk about element modifiers after that. OK, so in an Ember component right now, there are, pardon me, 13 lifecycle hooks. There's a bunch of properties on it. Um, hey, Trom. Um, there's, it's, there's a lot of pieces to make up um, an Ember component. In, in Amberland, back in the day, we had to uh, create our own uh, class system. Um, so we created an Ember object, um, which meant we could do a lot of things uh, that made IE6 work well for us. Um, and this is a chance for us to get rid of a lot of that and to start over again with something much smaller and much faster. So the Glimmer component only has two lifecycle hooks and two properties on it. And I'll show you why that's worthwhile for us. Does that make sense? OK. <laughs> Man, he walks in the door and trolls right away. Um, uh, both, mate, both. OK, so here, here's one thing about um, 
about React, the way that React has a really great virtual DOM, and they brought this whole thing into the industry. Um, and we in the Amber world were like, wow, that's great. Um, then we thought about it. How can we improve on this? What, so um, with the virtual DOM here, uh, um, React would diff across the whole DOM to see what's changed and then do the updates to the page. With Glimmer, we know, we already know what is static inside your template. So when we do our differing algorithm, we only have to track the things that might change. So the differing that's done in, 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 a, um, in an Amber application would only be looking at these two pieces. These are the two pieces that could change in this, in this component. So we only need to track and, um, and look at what's dirty or what needs to be updated to the page. Um, at, at the point that those things need to change. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, fast apps need to be fast. They need to download fast. But they also need to parse fast. They also need to compile quickly and be evaluated. So this is what it takes for an application to get up and running on someone's, on someone's machine. It isn't just that it's downloaded and it just starts. There's a whole process that thing go, things go through. I want to talk about the parse and the compile, more the parse step here. So if you take, um, if you take uh, a meg of JavaScript, uh, sorry, a meg of JSON, and you evaluate it through JavaScript, it takes, um, it takes, 115 milliseconds to evaluate the JavaScript. Because the JavaScript is so complex as a language, it takes a lot longer to parse that uh, if you evaluate it with JavaScript. So if you do that with JSON, it's a lot faster. So one of the things, one of the things that happened, um, let me just go back a bit. So in a React world, your templates are compiled, j the JSX is compiled to a, a JavaScript function. So as your, as your bundle is loaded into the browser, the browser has to parse uh, pass that JavaScript code to know what's going on uh, before it can do the compile step and then the evaluation step. And then obviously there's one more step of painting to the, to the page as well. So one thing that's happened on the, on the Glimmer component side, so inside an Ember application, we are now uh, at compile time compiling all our templates to JSON, which is meant for some big applications like um, Intercom. Um, their whole dashboard is, is an Ember app. They were able to drop um, a quarter of their whole bundle size because of compiling version. Does that make sense? This is just one of the things that happens in the Ember world. As new things are rolled out, a new six weeks has gone past, new things have landed, they just get shipped to us, and it's very—it's not very difficult for us to upgrade to the next thing, and our apps just be faster or better or easier to maintain. And this is one of those. Okay, so we're going to try and we're going to look at some code here of what Glimmer code looks like, uh, or or Ember code in a Glimmer component. Um, I'm just going through a little thing I put together today to show you what we're going to be looking at. So this is just a, um, what I called a van life card. Um, so you can see here, you click and edit. You can, then you can put something into the input. And then as, that's, as you click save, then that's added to the tag. I just want to show you what it could do, just so that as we look at code, you understand what we're looking at. Does that make sense? OK. And I hope the code is big enough, too. Some of it's going to get smaller, though, but that's the problem I have, right? But you have got the best one. You can see it? OK, this one. OK, so what we have here, what we have here is the whole piece that's rendering this page. I have a, what I call a cookie provider. And this cookie provider is a, uh, is, um, a provider component. or uh, so it actually has nothing that's rendered to the DOM and only provides some methods uh, or and some actions, as we say in the Ember world, to manage um, writing writing to the cookie and also sh whether to show and and hide that component. 
Does that make sense? It's actually not showing a height in the component. It's, it's actually passing a Boolean of whether the thing inside should be seen. So as you can see here, this if statement is saying, if this is false, don't show anything inside. If it's true, then show the component inside. Does that make sense? So the template, the, the way that things work in an Amber world is you have a JavaScript um, file and you have a template. The, because we use templates, has, this has allowed us to be able to do all of the, um, the upgrading or the uh, better compile time things because we have a separation between our JavaScript and our templates. Uh, has meant that we're able to do a lot of things under the hood. A developer writes the same things, but we're able to mundle that at build time to make better um, download times and, and parse times, if that makes sense. Okay. So this, so I'm talking about the cookie provider. Th this is the component, um, the template, I should say, for the um, for that cookie provider. So what it's actually doing is only yielding a few properties off of out of the cookie provider component, and not doing anything to the DOM. This yield is just basically saying, here I'm passing you this thing. This hash helper here is passing it as one hash. Um, as we go back here, you can see this as provider. That provider is then passed into the context of the component, and those methods then can be used in the subsequent components, in the child components here. Does that make sense? Is this is that clear? Um, you know, I I have I have done no React coding. I have never I've touched React a, a couple of times. I really don't know what I'm talking about. So help me out, okay? If I say something dumb, honestly, it's. I should say here too. This is um, the uh, rental van. The the why we have this notation like this is that there is um, a folder inside a component directory, and there's a, f a folder called rental, and inside that folder is a is a file called um, van life. That's the the the. Um, the two colons denotes um, the spacing between folder structure. Make sense? Great. I like it when it makes sense. Okay. Is this okay? Okay. So this is a th this is really that actual card, and I'll just go through bit by bit here a little bit of what you're seeing uh, and how Amber works. Um, so I have the this is the template. And then this is the, the backing component, the JavaScript side of the component. We'll just go through the template first. Um, so at the top, we have a component called frame. That, that just gives us this frame. That basically, it's a UI component. Um, we are using a local class here, which gives us uh, com uh, module CSS. So this, um, this is module CSS. Then we've got a, um, the X on the side. Up here, we have an action. So we're showing on click, it will it will fire some some method back up. Um, inside Ember Ember World, there's a notion of data down and actions up. Uh, we took that wholesale from React World, I think. Is that right? <laughs> you pass your data down, one-way data flow. Okay, so obviously there's this image here, um, and then another component that's doing the heading, and this is again just style. There's um, another piece that just, um, so the P tag here, in the middle of it has this double curlies. This is this denotes where um, in, the Javs, in the template something dynamic will be happening. Um, one, thing, one thing that you can see here is that this, the, the naming convention is important here. The, this tag means that it's only in the scope of this component. It's not coming from anywhere else. This at sign here means it's coming from somewhere outside of the component. This is being passed in from somewhere else. Um, and you can see that here, that we're passing in this on close uh, parameter, or um, as we say args, um, you guys, or React people would say props. What do view people say? A few people say props. Okay, we'll keep going here. So then basically we've got a Boolean that's saying if editing, um, then show a form, else show a button. Does that make sense? Is that simple? Okay, then you can see on the form we have on submit, um, um, 
We have an on submit function here. Oh, it, it's an attribute that that is an um, that this form component provides. That as we uh, as something happens to the submit button, we are then able to send a function back. So if we look at this component. Um, if we look at the JavaScript side of this, there's an on submit function here. And basically we're saying this is a function to be called when the submit happens on our, comp on our template. So then inside we have an input field. Um, the value is this.tag or new tag. Um, the requirements hash here is, is, a, is a part of our input field that we have that allows for uh, validation. And then obviously placeholder. Placeholder is, if, if you see here, is just a normal HTML attribute that's then passed through to the input field. Does that make sense? If I wanted to put any other data tags on here that we might use for testing or other things, we can just pass those things through. Um, then we have a button. Um, and um, because it's type of submit, it will then submit the form when it's clicked. Does that make sense? Is anything weird here? No? Okay, so here, th this is, for us Ember people, this, this changes our world a lot. So um, inside, inside the Ember world, we used to use a lot of getters and setters, and a lot of people back in the, who, I should have asked that question, who's actually used Ember once before? Okay, who's never heard of Ember? Okay. Who uses it every day? Three, okay. My friends. <laughs> I'm not joking. Okay, so um, in the past, you can, as you can see here, this is just using native class syntax. Um, um, and then we're also using decorators here. This is one of the things, actually, that uh, we in the Ember world have been really pushing for. We were really sad that decorators didn't get in at the last TC39 meeting. Um, there is another one, actually, in Seattle in July, so we can all go protest there if we want uh, to get decorators landed. Um, so this, tr this tract uh, and this action uh, property are decorators on top of these functions that add some extra pieces for it. So inside of Ember World, we, we want to track, we use track to know what elements in the DOM, if they change, may need to be updated. Does that make sense? So this is an easy way for us to say, track this thing, track that. If, it, if, you, um, if this changes, then update it in the DOM. So as I was building this, I didn't track new tag. And so in this function down here on submit, it would, it would submit the button, and the new tag wouldn't change the DOM. So inside the input field, everything, it, the, the value would just stay there because the DOM wouldn't be updated. Once I added tracked, then everything is tracked, and things are then flushed to the DOM. Does that make sense? Is there anything else that's weird here? OK. Um, for us, same people, we used to have to use a lot of this dot set, this dot get. This was so much prettier and beautiful. Uh, and thanks, React, for pushing us this way. <laughs> okay, another thing I think that's really great, that's really really great in this Octane update for Ember, um, element modifiers. And this is an element modifier. I, I told you before that the com the component, a Glimmer component, which is the um, the, comp the model that's, or the, the class that bases our component system inside of Ember um, only has two lifestyle ho hooks. Um, this, is, this is how we're going to change that, um, not change it. This is the new way for us to do this inside of Ember world. We use these things called element modifiers. So this is very similar to component did mount. Is that right? Component did mount. So in an Ember world, we say did insert element. So this, as I put this on here, this will fire as soon as this element is is um, loaded into the DOM. Okay. So fire. fire. What's going to fire? This th there's a function. This is a function. Um, yeah. Th this is a function. Actually, I need to pass a function to this. But th this will fire that function as this is uh, as put into the page. Into the page, does that make sense? I'll show you two two more here. 
Um, but the element modifier goes on to an element, and it has, um, it, it knows what element it's on, and is able to register itself with the element that's been put into the page. Um, which allows for us to have much more composability across our applications. One of the things that's really important for accessibility is to trap the focus of, um, of the user into the element that is uh, into an element. One of the places that's really difficult is on a modal. When a modal pops, someone who's using accessibility needs to be able to tab through only the modal. They, they shouldn't be tabbing anything underneath it. It's in the browser. So we have this, um, this element modifier here that we use at Outdoorsy called Trap Focus, um, which looks like this. So we get the element. We're able to, say, add a, uh, an event listener. Um, I've truncated the code a little bit. But basically, we're able to set, look at all of the things that could be tabbable in that, in that, um, in that modal. And then as someone's cycling through it, it would just trap them in the modal until they hit escape and it closes it. If I return a function here, this is very similar to React hooks, by the way. Um, if you return a, um, a function here, then it will just tear everything down. So tear down the event listener and move on. Does that make sense? Um, here's another one that, that is really useful. Oftentimes when you're um, adding a tooltip that you, you sometimes can have uh, components in different places and you have to hook those two components up together because you need to know IDs on those components. Um, this uh, element modifier here, I'm able to put this on any div or anything in my application and it's able to know what element I'm registered on and then be able to show a tooltip on that page, or, or on that element. Does that make sense? Th this for us is going to change a lot of what we do and how we code, make our stuff much more composable. I've seen, yeah, I've seen many different implementations of, of trying to put a tooltip on things and, and the hooking up of elements together to make sure um, that things are sticky to the element as you scroll. Um, this changes that uh, quickly. Okay, I'm just gonna run through a few quick things here about the Amber ecosystem. Um, it's super easy to add new things to your application. So if you want to use TypeScript in your application, all you need to do is run this command, and you're able then to start writing in TypeScript. And honestly, it's that easy. It's not, there's no configuration. There's no other pieces. This will just help start build, uh, help you uh, build your stuff in TypeScript and then add it to your build, and all of those pieces that you would expect to happen um, is honestly that easy. If you want server-side rendering, you can say MBCLI fastboot. Fastboot's our server-side rendering thing. Now your app is server-side rendered. If you want to add GraphQL with Apollo, you can just add this, and then you can start using GraphQL. If you want to add a service worker, you can just say Ember, um, Ember install, Ember service worker. The add-on ecosystem inside the Ember world is really great, and things are uh, only getting better. Okay. Um, we have two we, we have two events coming up. One big event is um, in Seattle on uh, June 27th. Um, one of the co-founders of Ember is going to be here. We're going to have a um, it's going to be over at Avalara. Um, if you look on our meetup page, you'll see um, we're going to advertise that tomorrow. Um, but uh, Yehuda will be coming to talk about a lot more of what's happening inside the Ember ecosystem. Um, and he's, he's, a, he's part of TC39. He's a person who's been pushing decorators. He's a um, person who's pushed for classes. Um, he's not just an Ember person. He does a lot more outside of that. And Rust as well. Um, and then I, since I've talked about, I was talking about this, um, I'm going to do a three-week uh, training for anybody who'd like to learn Ember. Um, I work out of the South Lake Union WeWork. So on every can... So starting May 22nd, um, for every fortnight from there, every two weeks, um, we'll take two hours, two and a half hours, and we'll build, build something like a Slack clone or, or an email clone or something along those lines. But we'll get in, code, work through things. Um, who, is anybody interested in that? OK, great. Um, 
So that's actually, um, I'm going to post that now. I'll post that right after this. So that, I've got it on the Ember, Ember um, the meetup page for Ember, Seattle, Ember.js. Um, let me know. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. Am I, any questions? No one has questions, right? <laughs> any questions? You, What's the next edition? I think the so the Amber Octane is another edition. I think there will be another edition probably in a year's time. Just like someone needs to go advertise for Chrome. Hey, these are all the great things that have happened in Chrome. Um, get on board. Or or the same thing with uh, um, Edge as well. Someone needs to go around about Edge and say, hey, this is why you need to use Edge. Anything else? Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, the, um, we, we basically have two TV stations in New Zealand, and one of them uses Ember for their uh, client-facing applications, actually. Yeah. Headspace as well. Anyway. Okay, cool. Any Thanks. other questions? Awesome. One more round of applause. That was great. <laughs>